Big Nose George Parrott and his friend Dutch Charlie Burris were not very bright and successful outlaws in the 19th century. After years of petty crimes, Big Nose George and Dutch Charlie decided to wreck and rob a Union Pacific train. The plan was to loosen a railroad spike, wrap it with telegraph wire, wait for a train, and then pull the spike out, causing a derailment. A good plan on paper. When out of the blue, a section crew quickly showed up and repaired the damage. After fixing the vandalism, the railroad workers promptly notified law enforcement about the sabotage near Medicine Bowl River. Soon, County Sheriff Deputy Robert Willowfield and Union Pacific Detective Henry Vincent tracked the criminals down and found them about 25 miles away from the attempted robbery. Unfortunately, the ruffians had set up an ambush in Rattlesnake Canyon near Elk Mountain. After gunning the two lawmen down, the outlaws fled to Montana. In 1879, Dutch Charlie was captured and sent back to Rollins, Wyoming to stand trial. At a cold water stop on the way to Rollins, a mob pulled Dutch Charlie from the train and strung him up from the nearest telegraph pole. His body was unceremoniously dumped and buried without a marker. In 1880, Sheriff James Rankin apprehended Big Nose George and took him back to Rollins for trial. Big Nose George was found guilty and sentenced to hang in 1881. After staging an unsuccessful jailbreak, an enraged rabble of townsfolks dragged Big Nose George to the nearest telegraph pole and tried to string him up. Due to the weight of his shackles, the rope broke. Even with Big Nose George screaming for mercy or a quick death, the mob put another rope around his neck, dragged him up a 15-foot ladder until he choked to death. Dr. John Osborne and Dr. Thomas McGee claimed the body. Believing Big Nose George's brain was abnormal, he wanted to study it. Dr. Osborne hoped he could determine why some people turned into nasty hoodlums by dissecting the brain. Unfortunately, he found nothing that would point to why some people turn into criminals and others do not. Not wasting Big Nose George, Dr. Osborne ordered his body to be skinned and tanned. Next, Dr. Osborne had shoes and a medical bag made out of Big Nose George's hide. Before throwing what was left of Big Nose George into a whiskey barrel, he gave the skull cap to his young 16-year-old assistant. Lydia in health throughout the years, she used it as a pen holder, ashtray, and doorstop. Big Nose George remained buried in his whiskey barrel until 1950. Construction workers dug up Big Nose George and now the Carbon County Museum in Rollins has his remains on display. Postscript, Dr. Osborne was so proud of his leather human shoes that when he became Wyoming's third governor, he wore them to his 1893 inaugural. Lillian Health grew up and became Wyoming's first female doctor in 1893. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe.